<laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Nadine and I'm here with the wonderful Christopher Brett Redis. Um, and we are here tonight going to be talking about a magnificent PowerPoint that Chris has recently done. I've thoroughly enjoyed it um, around porn uh, that he did for Top Bloke. Top Bloke. So very exciting. I really enjoyed it. I actually have like my notes and my pen here to make sure that I stay myself on track. <laughs> um, but I think the first question that um, I want to ask is, Chris, how did you direct it's such porn and pornography use and the misuse is such a broad topic and so how did you find yourself narrowing down and going into that into that process that you chose like through starting with the history and then going into your clinical practice and I and adding addictions and or, uh, yeah so when I was putting it together and the brief um, from Top Bloke, which is an organization that focuses on young men's mental health so the talk does focus on the, the male perspective, but it generally could be applied to anyone. The, it, it's always important, I feel, to put things into context. Nothing happens in yeah. So understanding our relationship with um, erotica, art and pornography has been going on. I, I think I've, I've got a sign there was what, 30,000 um, BCE. 35. Yeah. so I, like, I read that down. <laughs> we, we've, we've been aroused by objects of attraction for yeah. some time and it's yeah. that's important to understand um and understanding the situation we are in today with the internet that's where yeah. like the addiction's coming in and that's where like seeing more clinical presentations and I think the readily access to internet, um, and I think I'm uh, would fear would put the fear of hearts in a lot of parents. And I think I want to focus on parents because I think when it comes to porn and adulthood, yeah, there are some red flags, particularly when it comes to relationships and misuse. But I think there are not a lot of spaces, or not enough spaces, that talk around porn and the misuse or the readily access that children and young people have to it. And when yeah. I'm personally talking, about, I'm talking about 18 years and under. Yeah. Um, based on our laws and the concept of having child exploitation material, we're gonna. I want to talk about it in that framework, if you don't mind. Eighteen years old and younger. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? That readily access to our young, our young beings having to pornography. Yeah. So, I'm, I I do mention in the presentation kind of a, a bit of what like what it was like for me when I was growing up in that it was hard to get your hands on porn. I was fortunate yeah. I had a brother who was a bit older who did have a stash. So I was able to sort of, um, you know, watch his videos. What kind of stash was it? <laughs> he did have <laughs> Debbie's Does Dallas. <laughs> but it was like, it was by luck. You know, it was yeah, by luck. Right. Now we're seeing clients as young as six seven eight yeah. Oh, yeah who yeah because they are so accustomed to the phone they know how to use the phone they know how to access the phone and the internet that they're accessing other things as well that they probably yeah. are probably highly age inappropriate so yeah yeah going back to the, and I, I think me and you can both agree that young people having that readily access to pornography is definitely a red flag. What I think also we, a problem is that parents with their kids and devices. Yeah. You know, there's, just, no, there's not enough monitoring. They're just on their phone. Yeah. On their yeah. iPad. Yeah. 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 And I think as I, was, I just want to really highlight, because I think we're not, uh, I know I am not condoning under the age of 18 individuals to have readily access to pornography. That's not what I hope our conversation is coming across, but it's about let's not pretend that it's not happening. How do we have conversations around it? How do we yeah. harm minimize? How do we have a space um, free of shame and, and um, secrecy? And we can start have conversations that kids are accessing it and, and bring it to the table. We know. And history has proven it over and over again that prohibition doesn't work. When you mm -hmm. say no, 
kids are going to go off and do it somewhere else. They're going to go and engage. Yeah. And, and it's great that you brought up the harm minimization because then that mm. creating conversations, creating a realistic conversation around... Mm. Not necessarily, you don't have to talk about porn, but it can be talking about sex, sexuality, gender yeah. roles. Um, yeah. And I Expectations guess. Expectations of a healthy and unhealthy relationship. Sorry, there's a bit of delay oh with God, the Zoom. Yeah. yeah. How yeah. often that when we talk to kids about sex, it's about the don'ts. Don't get pregnant. Yeah. Don't SDIs. And you're right. Yeah. It does boil back also to that sort of. What's a healthy relationship? Exactly. And also when it comes to, I think something when I, when I find when I'm working with little little bears, little beans, um, they think they're ready for sex. Oh. And I'll be like, okay, so you think you're ready for sex? So you can tell the person no. Oh, no, I can't tell them no. I, I already said yes. Oh, so you can't back out. Well, what happens when you get pregnant? Oh, oh it'll be fine. I'll be, oh, but okay, well, what if you, what if you get embarrassed? Or what if you, what if you get hungry halfway through sex and you have to ask them to stop and can we go eat? No, you can't get hungry. Like, I know it sounds ridiculous, but these are the questions. It's like, no. you're not ready to have sex if you, if you can't have these basic conversations about yes, no, what do I like, what I don't like. Yeah. And I think, you know, when I'm working with young kids between the ages of 12 and 15, um, who are engaging in sexual activity, I will talk to them about well, what's the point of you, what is the purpose of you having sex? Yeah. Oh, for pleasure. Well, whose pleasure? Mm. Oh, his pleasure. And I'm like, oh, where are you getting that from? <laughs> and I can't help but wonder. And 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 you know what? Some of them, I'm not gonna say 100 percent of them, will come back down to porn. Yeah. You know, and it's very, it's very, I think when we, when the the mainstream porn, the free stuff. Mm. it's it's you know and what kids are looking for um it's either intense kink without conversations around how to set up a scene and without consent mm. or like yeah there's a, a there's a lot of problematic stuff that kids have come back and told me and about i'm like where are you, where are you getting this porn from and it goes back to context right it, it's that this is a form of entertainment. Yes. Is a, kids don't know that. And they don't. And they don't mm. understand how much editing, you know. Yes. When you talk to clients and say the first scene that they film often is the ejaculation scene, then they go back. You know. Fascinating. And yeah. it, it's understanding. And, and, and you're right. There's a lot of things in porn that are absent. Bypassed completely. Yeah, and free porn is like you you you're cutting to the hot bits, so you they so they entice you to come and purchase it or go to the website or pay yeah. them, you know, for the story. But even the ones, uh-huh. um, the, the the full length. Sorry, story. my head went to like, did somebody order a pizza? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Still, a lot of that stuff will, you know, bypass. Though it's yeah. quite interesting. Now, as a gay man, we're living in the age of prep condoms have kind of disappeared because mm-hmm. supply and demand guys don't want to see that but yeah. even back in the days when there was condoms it just appeared they didn't show the awkward couple of minutes where the guy was trying to yeah. get out, where he was losing his erection. erection yeah that 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 realness of yeah. oh fuck what do i do now yeah it kind of just oh and it's on. <laughs> yeah. And conversations around contraception as a whole don't happen. Oh. You know, it's it's always assumed that, it, and I'm and let's talk about it in a hetero perspective for a second, yep. that it's the woman's responsibility or femme individual womb holder yep. who can possibly really get pregnant is their yep. responsibility to keep themselves safe. It's not a two-person. And that comes with that, uh, that yep. emotional intelligence, the maturity, the nuances of these conversations. None of that happens. Yeah. Um, and I know, and I think something that I loved at the end of your presentation was like, after the magnificent, like the issues with um, what happens with overuse of porn and the addictions pass that, I'm sure we can come back to that later, but about having conversations with your children. Um, and it talks about 
that bond and I, and I think I used the word attunement when I was writing my notes like the importance of having attunement and being and tapping into your child and being able to have these really challenging conversations and be as a parent sitting okay with the fact you may not know the answer mm. and 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 but still allowing a, a space for those communication channels yeah it's important again nothing happens in a vacuum if your yeah. child's off and they are watching quite explicit porn and they're using it as a coping mechanism to deal with stress and you've never had a conversation about their day or the stresses at school or um are they getting picked on or you know if you're not having any of the other either mundane or other difficult talks you're not going to be able to have these conversations. They won't be able to come to you and sort of say, no, no. I, I, my partner, my boyfriend is wants to do this really rough sex with me. Um, what do I do? You're too young to be having sex at all. You, you're too young to be having sex at all. Don't do it at all. Yeah. Okay, yeah. well, that, what, that what literally just happened. Yeah, no. Yeah. And it's just shut down. And now we know that that young person is going to go do what they're going to do and now they're going to have conversations with younger or mm. emotionally in, in different levels of emotional intelligent people yeah. or uh, yeah i, I stress yeah. the presentation um as well that a parent who shames their child for using porn it will impact the kids relationship with their sex their sex lives yeah. that doing yeah. these things engaging in these pleasurable things is wrong yeah so it's yeah. about um creating an environment where mm. you can where the child feels that they can freely come to you without judgment and with suspended judgment yes with uh, suspended judgment i think it's i think it's very challenging for us as humans, as therapists, as, you know, whatever roles you, we have to expect that we in our human nature cannot judge completely because we are critically thinking beings that are constantly reflecting and processing. And in that comes judgment and guilt and, and whatever it is when we're comparing it to our moral compass. Mm. But when it comes to the little people, it's about that suspended judgment and really, really mm. identifying when it is their time to process and be heard and when and when it is your time and who do you speak that to? You don't go and engage with a young person to process all these uncomfortable feelings. That's an inappropriate imbalance. It's also about yeah. active listening. It's listening to mm. you. Yeah, and that attunement. Yeah, active listening and that attunement. Yeah. Listening to what they're saying. Why are they using porn? Why are they engaging in the activity? Mm. What, what, what is going on for them? Is there peer pressure? Is there coercion? Are they, are they stressed? And then they, they, they- Are they, you as a parent not showing up for your child? Is that why they're seeking external coping? But, you know, that's a hard one. It's a hard one to sit with. It's a common one that I work with. Yeah. Um, Chris, coming to um, a beautiful like kind of conclusion, what is one thing, what is one, um, one tip you would give a parent who can feel a little bit dysregulated when their child or is coming with these conversations what is something like a, a tool that you would gently recommend other than seeing therapy and being getting some parenting capacity which there should be no shame in whenever we're not taught how to be good parents but what would be a tool or something something simple that someone could tap into while sit, seeing an uncomfortable conversation like that with their child I think, young person. I think we've mentioned the two just there, that suspended judgment and active listening, but add a third one of, you don't need to know all the answers. You just need mm. to be there for that person. That little person is coming to you. And that moment you, you as the adult are in a position that you know how you can go with this. You have are able to control your emotions and your feelings. That little person yeah. is still coming to terms um, yeah. with all these things. And in that moment, you can show you're leading by example. You know. Yeah, beautiful. Um, that's that's what, that's what I would say. And 
it, there's nothing wrong yeah. with saying, do you know, do you want, mate, mate, let me get back to you on that. Let, let's talk, let's yeah. pick the conversation up um, later, but let's get back to that. Let's learn it together. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much for um, the late, the late Zoom session with me, the busy <laughs> schedules. Um, I really thoroughly enjoyed like I said, I literally wrote notes as I was watching it. Um, I didn't even realize that it was 35 minutes. I was so, I loved the, the history and the way you looked at um, that uh, porn and addiction. It's all about a coping mechanism and a pattern for self-soothe and self-regulation. So that was wonderful. Um, thank you everybody who tuned in. Um, as always, we'd love to hear your questions and thoughts and things that you'd like us to talk about or see. Um, yeah. Tune in for our next one in a couple of weeks' time. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.